In this video I'm going to show you how to use a stub mandrel to finish off this little flywheel here. Um, this is a flywheel for my model engine, there's another one here that I'm making. So the problem is uh, we've got to machine the outside surfaces of this flywheel concentric with the hole that's been reamed in the middle uh, and there's no way of holding that in a normal chuck to do that. So what we're going to do is use a stub mandrel. This is a common machining trick. Uh, here's one that I made earlier. There's another one here. Basically what it is is a piece of stock that's held in the chuck like that uh, and then you have to machine uh, a, a, a section on the end and put a thread on that holds your part. Uh, the trouble is that once you've removed one of these from the chuck uh, you've lost the concentricity, so basically it's scrap. So you need to make a new one pretty much every time unless you're prepared to clock it straight using uh, a four-draw chuck and a dial test indicator. So this bar is what we're going to be using. This will go straight into the chuck uh, through the bore of the spindle um, and we're going to machine the stub mandrel on, on this end. Uh, we're going to be using the tailstock die holder with a 6mm metric die in it uh, and to machine the stud mandrel just using a normal turning and facing tool and we need one which has got a pretty sharp point in there to get into the corner of the piece like that. So we've come over to the lathe, we're just going to get the lathe set up to make our stub mandrel. First thing we're going to do is stick the tailstock die holder into the tailstock. Don't need that just yet so I'll slide that out of the way. Got our turning and facing tool which is going into the quick change tool post. Let's just tighten that up and finally here's our piece of metal, just any old steel will do. Ideally something that's free machining and easy to cut. Let's just bung that into the chuck and oops, drop the chuck there, that's not good. And just tighten that up. We've got about a, an inch, inch and a half of material protruding which is about right. Um, should never tighten the chuck too tightly but I'm going to do it quite firmly in this case because if it shifts in the chuck then the concentricity will be lost and we'll be wasting our time. It's probably about as long as we need for this particular job so I'm just going to turn that down to just shy of the 6mm diameter. There are two separate diameters on this at this point. The bit on the left is just over the 6mm diameter, it's just roughed out. The bit on the right, which is where the thread is going to go, is just under 6mm to give an easy action on the die. Now I've put the lathe into the slowest back speed gear and if I just turn it on you'll see how slowly it goes. There we go, that's pretty slow and we can do our thread cutting at that speed. So we can now slide the tailstock die holder up to engage the work. Just lock the tailstock there. And you need to be a little bit careful with this because you're doing it under power. I would only recommend doing this for very small threads. For large threads um, you're going to be introducing a lot of forces which is probably worth doing using an alternative method. But for a 6mm thread I think this is perfectly acceptable. I've moved the tool post out of the way by drawing the cross slide back. The pommy bar on the die holder is now resting on the lathe's cross slide, so that will stop it rotating. And I'm just going to wind on the tailstock feed. The die is now cutting, you just let it cut. I've just released the carriage lock, which I should have done earlier. And it's now pulling itself onto the work until we get to the end of the threaded portion. That's now winding itself off the work nicely. I think it's done it. And we've got our M6 thread on the end of the stub mandrel. The final job in doing this is to turn the plain portion of the stub mandrel to precisely 6mm in diameter so that it's a very good fit on our flywheel. At the moment it won't go on, but it's got to be a good fit. So we're going to measure the diameter with a micrometer and then apply the appropriate cut using the cross side to get it spot on. We're just measuring the diameter with the micrometer and it comes out at 6.21 mil. So we need to take 0.21 mil off that, that'll be about right I think. It's 
pretty good. Virtually shake free fit, that's close enough. So my lovely stub mandrel is now ready to go. So what I've got, I put the flywheel on. Got an M6 nut which goes on there, should get a washer actually, I'll dig one out in a minute. But just to show you how it works, I'll put that on there. Got a box spanner, is that called a box spanner? So tighten it up. What we need to be very careful here is that we don't disturb the thing in the chuck, so don't do it too tight. So now we're up and running and we can machine the right hand face and the outer diameter concentric and square with the bore of our flywheel. And that is how the stub mandrel works.